Welcome back to Game Design with Scratch. Today we're going to learn how to create an ice cream shop game. This game is one of my favorites because after all, what's better than ice cream? But also this is something we've all seen before in one form or another. It is the very popular pizza game where you work in a pizzeria and are trying to fill orders correctly and as quickly as you can. I even used to play this with my kids when they were little. I would give them a card with my ice cream order and they would try to build it using different pieces of felt. So we're all familiar with this type of game in one form or another, which makes it even more fun to learn how to build it in Scratch. So I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's get started. Let's start by playing the game so we can get a feel for what it does. So the game starts out by displaying this opening for two seconds, and then it switches over to the actual ice cream shop. We immediately have a customer and an order, and I can go ahead and fill the order by first selecting a cone, then a flavor, and finally a topping. As soon as I select the topping, the done button appears on the screen, and when I click it, the ice cream I just built will be checked against my customer's order. It looks like I have filled my customer's order correctly, so when I click the done button, I should get a check. And as you can see, my score has also increased by five points. Now, I was kind of slow as I was explaining this to you guys, but I could have gotten up to 10 points depending on how fast I filled the order. So as you can see, I already have a new customer and a new order. And again, I'm going to fill the order, but I just wanted to point out that I'm not able to select an ice cream flavor before I select a cone and I'm not able to select a topping before I select an ice cream flavor. So if I try and select an ice cream flavor, for example, at this point, nothing is going to happen. So our player has to first select a cone, then select an ice cream flavor, and finally select a topping. And we'll be working on enforcing these rules in the code, of course. Okay, so let's fill this order incorrectly this time. And as you can see, I got an X and no points were added to my score. Let's do it one more time and see if I can actually get more than five points. Looks like I got nine points this time. Not bad. Okay, so let's get you guys all set up with the starter project so we can start building this game. Below this video, click the Get the Starter Project button. Enter your email address and the download for your starter project should get to you pretty much instantaneously. So I'm going to head over to my inbox, open up my email, and click this download button. This will download a starter project with this .sb2 extension, either into your downloads folder or some other folder where you choose to save it. Now let's open up Scratch, click on Create to create a new project, and then go to File, Upload from your computer, navigate to the place where you save this file, and click Open. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the contents of the current project, and yes, we do, so click OK. OK, let's take a look at what we have to work with. This is not a difficult game, but it does have quite a few sprites we have to keep track of. So it's important we understand what each sprite is used for. And when you're coding, please pay extra attention and make sure you put the code in the right place. OK, let's look at what each of our sprites represents. Our first sprite is our customer sprite, and it, of course, represents the customer right over here. It has eight different costumes for the eight unique customers we're going to have. We will randomly select one of these costumes each time we're ready for a new customer. Now let's take a quick look at our game again. Inside our thinking bubble, we have our customer's order, and it is actually comprised of three different sprites. So this cone right over here is the cone our customer would like to order. It is represented by the second sprite in the sprite panel, and it has two costumes to choose from. It has a vanilla cone costume, and it has a chocolate cone costume. And what's going to happen is, each time a new customer comes in, the computer is going to randomly select one of these cones and then display its selection right over here. 
So again, the name of the sprite is order cone and it represents the cone our customer would like to order. Now the ice cream flavor and topping our customer would like to order are done in the same way. This ice cream scoop right over here is this order ice cream sprite. It has three different costumes to choose from, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. And again, each time a new customer comes in, the computer is going to randomly select one of these costumes as the customer's choice. Finally, we have the customer's choice of a topping up here, and that is represented by the fourth sprite in our list, which is called order topping. Order topping has three costumes. It has the cherry topping, the hot fudge topping, and the sprinkles topping. And again, same thing, the computer is going to randomly select one of these costumes as the customer's choice. Okay, once we have our customer's order, we have to fill it. And we're going to do that using all these different food items in our shop. So for cones, we can fill the order using a chocolate cone or a vanilla cone. And each of these is a sprite. The vanilla cones are the sprite over here. And the chocolate cones are the sprite over here. For ice cream, we can fill the order using the vanilla flavor, the chocolate flavor, or the strawberry flavor. And each one of those is represented by a sprite. Finally, for topping, we can fill the order using a cherry, some hot fudge, or some sprinkles. And again, each one of those is represented by a sprite. So these eight sprites, the two sets of cones, the ice cream flavors, and the toppings, just sit there waiting to be clicked and be used to fill an order. Now when we click them, the ice cream we're building is going to appear on the screen. So when I click up here on the vanilla cones, an actual vanilla cone appears on the screen. This vanilla cone is another sprite. It is this waffle cone sprite right over here, and it has two costumes. It shows up in its vanilla cone costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with a vanilla cone, and it shows up in its chocolate costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with a chocolate cone. Again, the same thing is done for the ice cream flavor. When we select the flavor to serve the customer with, an actual ice cream scoop appears on the screen. And this ice cream scoop is another sprite. It is this ice cream sprite down here, and it has, you guessed it, three costumes. It shows up in its vanilla costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with a vanilla flavor. It shows up in its chocolate costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer in a chocolate flavor. And it shows up with its strawberry costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with a strawberry flavor. Finally, when we choose a topping to serve the customer with, an actual topping appears on the screen. And as I'm sure you're able to guess by now, this topping over here is another sprite. So the name of the sprite is Toppings, and you can find it right down here. The topping sprite has three costumes. It shows up in its cherry costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with a cherry topping. It shows up in its hot fudge costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with the hot fudge topping. And it shows up in its sprinkles costume when we click over here and choose to serve the customer with sprinkles. Now, like we said before, after we select a topping, the done button appears on the stage and the done button is represented by the sprite. Finally, when the done button is clicked, a check or an X are displayed on the screen depending on whether or not we fill the order correctly. Those are two different costumes of the same sprite, and that is the correct sprite down here. So the correct sprite has two costumes, a check costume and an X costume, and it chooses which one to display depending on whether or not we fill the order correctly. Our stage has only two backdrops. It has the opening backdrop, which will be displayed for two seconds at the beginning of each game. And then it has this ice cream shop backdrop, which will be the background for the game. And I think we're ready to start building this game. Are you excited? I know I am. So let's head over to step one and start out by setting up our shop. 